Hey guys, what's going on? This is Mike with Below Average Blogger, and today I wanted to discuss mistakes that new bloggers make when they decide to jump into blogging and what they should be doing instead. So stick around. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for tuning in, and let's jump into it. All right, so one of the first two, and they kind of go together, mistakes that I see with new bloggers, and the reason why I see these is because I do spend a lot of time on places like Reddit and the Just Start subreddit and um, you know blogging subreddits where people discuss blogging and you get a lot of new bloggers who come in ask questions or, or share their progress and I see some consistent themes that I think should definitely be addressed um, for those of you who are starting and you can stop yourself now from making these mistakes and get moving on making content so the first one two mistake I see and they kind of go together is niche selection and domain name and I'll break down each of those together but the niche selection, while it is super important to pick the right type of niche that's not super competitive, you also don't want to spend all your time focused on your niche selection. So for example, if you spend, and I see these posts fairly often on Reddit, hey, after a few months I finally narrowed down what niche I think I'm going to go into. Well, dude, in a few months you could have picked, you could have picked a niche in a week and you could have for a few months been writing content for that niche and be a few months ahead in earning revenue. Um, so some quick things to think about when you f pick a niche is how monetizable is it, right? So how many affiliate programs are there for that? What is the individual average price of these items? Uh, how much traffic is the seed keyword getting? And then beyond that, how much competition does that seed keyword have? So for example, my first website, because I just jumped into it and I didn't spend any time thinking about niche. I just said, oh, I like to go camping. I like the outdoors. I like overlanding and rooftop tents. So I'll do something dedicated to that. Well, it turns out that that niche is so heavily saturated, not only on YouTube, but in Google and websites. And it's just an Instagram, it's super saturated. So you're one website out of 200 plus writing about the same best tents, best camping gear, informational posts, whatever. So keyword research is tough, competition is brutal, and ranking is very hard. Um, on the flip side of that, you don't want to pick something so obscure that there's just not enough keyword volume for you to ever rank enough, even with all your posts, to get anywhere. So for example, this is my fishing license here in Colorado, or my hunting and fishing license here in Colorado. And let's say I want to do a website about um, fishing, right? Or, or let, and we'll narrow that down, fly fishing, right? Well, fishing is saturated, fly fishing is pretty competitive. And then what if we went down to um, fly hooks, right? So you know everything about fly hooks there is to know. You're a, you're a fly guy, the fly fishing guide out in the mountains, and you know everything there is to know about fish, fly fishing hooks, and you wish you could share it with the world. Well, if you go search that seed keyword of fly fish hooks, just curious what it brings up actually. Fly fishing hooks. So that seed keyword, fly fishing hooks, has a monthly search volume estimated of 720. So that seed keyword, if you base your niche on fly fishing hooks, you might be the expert, you might have all the expertise in the world, but there's just not enough volume of search queries out there for you to build a site that would give you enough traffic. You might own all the number one spots for everything related to fly fishing hooks, but you also might max out your traffic total at 5,000 a month, because that's just, you own everything. There's just not enough volume for that niche. So. Don't waste too much time thinking about your niche, but also don't go for the huge niches that are highly competitive and then don't mix that or, or and conversely don't go with a niche that's so small and so narrow that even though you know everything about it, it's just not going to bring any volume. Pick something that's got decent volume, a few hundred, over a hundred thousand visitor or searches a month, but is also not super competitive. Finding that balance will really set you up to do well with your blogging. All right, number two mistake I see often, and it's surprising to me, is that people will go on and say, hey, I, I finally came up with a domain name after six weeks. What are you doing? Because six weeks, you could have had that website up, live, running, and uploading content, doing keyword research, building your brand, whatever you're doing. What you don't want to be doing is spending six weeks thinking of a domain name, because at the end of the day, whether someone goes to fly, flyhook.com, you know, flyhookking.com or flyhookhq.com or flyhookinfo.com, it doesn't matter. What you need to do is pick a brandable domain name, any of those will work, flyhookking.com, flyhookinformer.com, whatever, and, and go to work. 
thinking you need this perfect domain name. Oh, I got www.flyhookmaster.com. Great, how much content does it have? How much traffic is it bringing? How much is it growing in Google Search Console? That's what matters. Your analytics, your traffic, your growth, your revenue. What doesn't matter is how cool your domain name is. Should it be short and to the point? Yes. Should it be brandable? Yes. Should it make sense to your niche and not narrow you down too much? Yes. But that's about it. And you can just move on from there. So if you have your niche selected, take your niche name, Flyhook, and add Informer, King, HQ, any of those to the end of it or before it, whatever, and you're good to go. Just start working. So when you think of like the successful niche websites out there, go downsize, camper report, you make the name and you move on. You don't spend weeks thinking about a domain name. It is not that important, but it needs to make sense. It needs to be to the point. It needs to be brandable. You can come up with that quickly. So get your niche within a few days, within a day of figuring out your niche, you should have a domain name and you should get started writing. All right. This is another one I see fairly often. I made the mistake myself multiple times. And that is when you're new, you're worried about your website design and your theme. And so I've met people who've showed me their website and they're very proud of the website, but they can't figure out why they don't have traffic. They can't figure out why they're not growing the way they want to. And they show me the URL and they're like, you know, check out my website. And I look at it, beautiful website, great website. Maybe whether they hired somebody, whether they just got a great theme and customized it well, maybe they just have an eye for that design. That's great. What about your content? What about your keyword research? What kind of volume are you bringing in? That's what really matters. So in the beginning, throw a theme on there that is fast, lightweight, not full of bloat, um, and put content on your website. You can figure out to how to make your website beautiful in a few months. You need to be writing content right now. Content is king, content earns revenue, content brings traffic, and content is what puts money in your pocket. So having content is way more important than, than how pretty or laid out your website design is. Make it clean, make it lightweight, and put content on it. You can make it super pretty down the road. And the flip side of that is you spend all your time making pretty content or pretty, you spend all your time making a pretty website and you never figure out keyword research and you never write a lot of content because you're so busy doing other things, your website's gonna fail anyway because you haven't done any of the steps to make it work. So forget about how pretty your website is and focus on writing great content for your website. If you notice, there's a theme here and that's writing great content and a lot of it, and that's gonna bring you your traffic. All right, so another mistake I see often is competing for highly competitive keywords. So I started in the camping niche and I would just search for things like best sleeping bag, best hiking boot, best tent, all this crappy content that didn't get me anywhere and it was highly competitive to begin with anyway. The site's ranking for that gearjunkie.com, switchbacktravel.com. I'm not outranking those as a DA11 site or a DA7 site or whatever I'm sitting at right now. Um, and they're over a year old, they're not ranking because I didn't write quality content and I was trying to write content. I was writing average content for highly competitive keywords with a low DA site. Well, that's a recipe for no traffic. So stick to low competition and I mean truly low competition. So search your keyword, search phrases for your keyword, see what's ranking, see how authoritative those sites are, see how many are ranking. If you search a keyword, and the first two pages of Google all have larger sites ranking that same article, don't touch it. You need to search a keyword and find out that the majority of page one of Google is forum posts and Reddit posts where people are discussing this, but no website has tackled the problem. That's the, that's the article you need to write. Also, you heard that the majority of websites are writing, or the majority of my articles in the beginning were best of, top 10, affiliate junk, right? Well, Google's decided they don't like that stuff anymore or they're trying to at least get away from it. So if they're trying to get away from it, let's stop writing it. They know people have been bombarded with best of and top 10. So write informational posts. Take whatever your niche is, fly fishing hooks, and look for the problems around it. So when people Google like, what size fly fishing hook for a brook trout in the Rockies? Or what size you know, leader do I need to attach to a fly hook? Um, or what, you know, maybe a leader chart for a fly hook chart. Solve problems for people that no one's answered on the internet. And then don't worry about the top 10 crap because it's not gonna make you a lot of money in the beginning. And also, if you're bringing in natural traffic, solving people's problems, they're gonna stay on your site longer, they're gonna read your stuff longer. And then you can turn that blog post into a funnel for a product. So if someone searches, 
best fly hook for brook trout in Rocky Mountains. You can cover that and cover the reasons why you want to use a certain type of hook, a certain size of hook, a certain bait that fits on that hook, um, the size of the fish's mouth, a brook trout versus a cutthroat. There's things you can tackle in that article that will be very helpful to the consumer who has this problem. But then towards the end, you can set it up to a call to action on a better product that you're affiliated with. It was an informational article, but now it's going to solve a problem for a person and then you can lead them to an affiliate sale. All right, and then the final one that I think is a problem in this business altogether, and new bloggers fall for it, I fell for it, and that is too many tools, right? Because you wanna win, you wanna rank, you wanna make money, you wanna do, you're putting all this effort into blogging, and so you want every tool that you think will help you get even that much further ahead. And the problem is, the biggest tool you're gonna need in blogging, and it's the most important tool, and it's free, is patience and discipline. I know nobody likes those two things, patience and discipline. We're, this is 2021 in America. We want it fast and we want it easy, but that's not blogging, right? So forget buying everybody's tools. I understand everybody's out there hawking affiliate programs and tools because they all get paid when they do so. But you as the new blogger, you need to put blinders on and you need to put your head down at your laptop and you need to write content and you need to be willing to wait for that content to rank and bring you traffic. Um, thinking you need to go in and have every keyword research tool and have every, I mean, I'm not gonna get, in, I'm not gonna start crapping on people's tools because some of the tools are effective and helpful, but not for new bloggers. It, it, it's gonna be a waste of your time and probably money in the beginning. You need a clean, lightweight theme. You need an easy brandable domain. You need some patience and you need the discipline to sit down and write content every single day and start ranking. Filling your, emptying your wallet with tools from other affiliate marketers that are, that are selling you to, to get ahead. Maybe some of them work, maybe some of them will help, but you know what will help more than all of that? Patience and discipline. So put your head down, write a lot of content, and stop wasting your money on tools, themes, layout, design, domain selection, niche selection. You need to put in, you need to put in the work. That's what you need to do. And you need to be willing to wait and understand that this is a long game. It's 12 months and beyond. So who cares what happens the next six months? Who cares what happens the next eight months? What I'm doing in that time is writing content. All right, guys, so that's it. I know that was kind of um, a little, little bit long-winded, but I, hopefully that will help you, those of you who are getting lost in all the information out there, just put your head down, get to work, write content, and we'll see you in 12 months when you're making money. All right, talk to you later.